Hi guys! Welcome back to my channel. I'm Juliana and in today's video I'm going to show you my uh, August wrap-up. <laughs> I was confused. Uh, so, um, last month um, I read... I was able to finish only a manga and that manga was Kamisama Hajime Mashita. In English, I think it is Kamisama Kiss. I I have already seen the anime um, several years ago, like yeah, many years ago, um, and I loved that anime. It was um, discovery that I did. I think it was on YouTube. Yeah, so. It was like by chance, you know, um, and it was really fun and interesting. Uh, so the story is about a girl named Nanami, Nana, Nanami, <laughs> Nanami, and she's like 16 years, years old and her mother has, has died when she was, I don't know exactly how, how old she was, but maybe 13, something like that, or even earlier. That part of the story I don't remember. Uh, so she stayed with her father, but her father had uh, trouble with gambling and he makes a lot of debts and someday one day uh, her father says that he's going on a trip that he's going somewhere and he aban abandons her and some in that same day um, because he, he left he leaves uh, a note to Nanami and she discovers that her father has gone away like that and the some um, some people are knocking to her door saying that sh she has to be evicted from her home and so she stays alone and she stays without a house in the same day then she is on the street on a park and some man is um, on a tree fleeing f um, of a dog and she goes there and um, uh, how do you say it like she she makes the dog go go away um, and the man thanks her and he says that he doesn't like dogs and she explains her situation to him and he um, propose, proposes to her that she goes to his place They're, that they are going to be awaiting for her and he gives um, a kiss in her forehead and something happens when he does that and Nana, and he leaves a map where she can find uh, his house and he leaves and then she with the map that that man um, gave her she goes to his house and she finds that is a shrine and there she is um she she becomes suspicious like how can i live in a shrine and she wants to leave but something pulls her in and she enters the shrine and um she is welcomed by two minions we can say that they have masks um and they welcome her, but they are confused. It's like 
they were sensing that he he um, she was the man that she knew, and there she also meets. I the the two minions that I'm talking about, they have names, but I don't remember. Um, yeah, I don't remember. It's not worth it. I can't remember. Um, and she also meets Tomoe. That he is um, what they call a Shinshi. It's like he's a helper of the god of the, tri the shrine. And we discover that Nanami was borrowed the seal of the god. So the man that she knew, he was a god. And he is the god of relationships. So his shrine is for people to go there and pray uh, for their relationship or their, their, their love life. Uh, and so she is... Um, Oh, so we also find out that the god of that shrine was um, a way of the shrine for 20 years. And she is um, now the substitute in a way. That's, that's what she finds out. But Tomoe is not like, he's not really enthusiastic with her rival. And he, he goes away. And then, well, the story develops after that. The, um, many situations occur. And many uh, adventures after that are going to happen. I love Tomoe. I love his, his character. Uh, he, he was, and still is, if to be fair, um, he he's my crush, my comics crush, if we can say that. He's really sexy. You have if you go Google, if you just Google it, you'll see some images of him, and you know he's really sexy and really handsome, and I love the way that he behaves with Anami. It's really hot and cold, like mouse and cat, you know? So it's really funny. And yeah, well, uh, I'm not... Many things happen in this manga. So many, many, many things. It is a manga that we have a slow burn. So some things that you want to know if they will happen. Um, they are only developing really late in the manga. <laughs> so, but it's really funny, really uh, engaging. You will be entertained all the way through the manga. The, then there exist many secondary characters and secondary parallel stories of the main story of Nanami. So it's, you know, it, it is about demons and gods and, you know, it's a bit um, magical in a way, but it's really fun. I love this manga. I don't know, is Sojo? If you know, I researched the types of manga that exist. But I don't think that I found um, a real good re uh, source uh, about the types of manga that exist. So if you know them, please let me know in the comments. I don't know exactly if this, this manga is Sojo. So I think the main... Um, target is young girls so surrounding like 15 to 18 I think so what type of manga that, that is 
do you know? If you do, please let me know in the comments and if you know the other types of manga, let me know as well with the explanation of the target public. Is that how you say it? You understand what I mean, right? So if you know, please let me know. Then, then nothing, right? Because I only read, I only finished this manga in August. I was supposed to have more time to for reading, and I had, but I passed that time doing other things besides reading, and. I don't know what happens. Like last year was so wonderful because I was like I didn't have had um I didn't schedule myself for reading, but for some reason I was more um faithful to my habits of reading and I was able to read 40 and something books that for me that is a, an achievement um, if you read more or you read less it doesn't matter right doesn't man matter the number of books that we read what matters is the quality of our readings and how we were entertained or how we loved the book that we read but i was so good with my habits like i i read if not every day almost every day and this year is so erratic it's like i can't stay bring myself to sit my bum <laughs> and breathe every day it's uh, i don't know what happened but it's really been it's been really difficult um and that is also a reason why I don't bring so much content to the channel because I'm not reading and this channel is supposed to be about books, right? So I'm going to try and see if till the end of the year I be a bit more regular with my habit let's see how that goes but i can promise really anything because i have other things to do and sometimes it's not because i don't want to read it's because i can't read really so let's see so the books that i'm currently reading i still the same so as you can see i'm still reading well first this one first the idiot by dostoevsky I advance a bit in my, so I'm here, I'm like halfway through, uh, not liking at all, still, uh, and that's only the only thing that I'm going to say, I'm not liking it. And then I'm reading Budenberg by Thomas Mann, I'm loving this one. It was um, a slow beginning and really slow paced. I wasn't sure when I read the first 30 pages, I was like, what people see in this book? I'm not seeing it because I only heard good things about this book. And in my first 30 pages, I wasn't understanding why. <laughs> It was being really boring and I was being afraid that it was going to be another reading that I wouldn't enjoy. But things turn around and right now I'm loving this story. It's about the family and that's all I'm going to say because I'm planning to do a video just... Um, targeting this book so yeah that's it okay now about the movies that i saw i saw elvis and i loved it uh, i thought that the casting was um, really well done 
I really love the actors that they chose for the roles. Um, so the story, of course, is about Elvis' life. So since he was a little child till his famous career. Um, and mainly it talks about his relationship with his agent. So he had only one agent. So he began um, being played in a radio station and people were um, starting to enjoy his music. His to-be agent um, started hearing him and at that time he was uh, with another artist, a country artist, singer, um, and at the same time he would help Elvis and he'd bring Elvis with that other singer in a tour so Elvis would open the, um, the show and then it will come the main singer but Elvis in that tour was making a lot of success because well mainly with the ladies ladies were getting all enthusiastic about Elvis because the way that he moved in the in the stage so he it was not something that was uh, uh, usual like the 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 singer moving that the way that he did um he was um associated with black music uh the the type of sound of his songs um and like the way that he moved it became um obstacle for him in the future uh, yeah well and then we see his agent um, cutting ties with that other singer the country singer and being solely the agent of Elvis and he does a tremendous success, success but he uh, has enemies in politics so politicians are worried that the way that Elvis moves in the stage um, are influencing the youth in the wrong way and so he's threatened by, by them and his agent is trying to talk through Elvis so he doesn't do the moves that he usually does but Elvis um, doesn't listen to him and in a show that he does he simply shows off and the, the public goes on fire and then uh, he's um, uh, threatened again and he has to or go, or go to jail or go to the military and he does a time in there and when he returns he has you know some trouble to get on board again with the trend and with um, with the high that he was when he left so he does a special show a uh, Christmas spe special I think that's how he called it um, and his agent wanted him to sing only Christmas songs because they have so they have sponsorship and the sponsors were expecting Christmas songs but he didn't want to do that so he employed two um, produ produ producers that were on that were famous at, at the time because they worked with other artists and they made they made a lot of success and he wanted to work with them and they planned a show 
where he would come with um, leather jackets and you know being edgy and not so much so much Christmassy and the agent wasn't really a fan of that and he was really being um, bothered by it but Elvis didn't care he wanted to be at his high again and well if you don't know the Elvis story I think that I'm going to stay here because I didn't know as well um, I didn't know much about uh, well I can say that I know now right I just saw one movie um, I have sometimes I hear Elvis songs but it's not like a usual thing but I really like his songs I think I love his voice I think he's so smooth um, but yeah well if you don't know his story I think you will find this movie really interesting so you can see also the relationship with his family and but mainly this is about his relationship with his agent and how sometimes that was toxic and you know the sceneries the filmography the photography is really beautiful um, his name is Austin Butler right the protagonist the the actor that does Elvis I think that's how he's called I think he was brilliant I really loved him um, his voice the way that he um, was able to find Elvis voice was really brilliant I really enjoyed that and Tom Hanks is well is fine as well but um, the way that he was characterized was a bit comic you know it what it was believable at least in my opinion I think it, it was convincing but at the same time it was a bit strange you know but well I suppose that how that person was right so I think he he, he wanted to be called captain something I think it was captain and you will find out that his identity was a, was questionable as well so very many um, suspicious things were happening and Elvis didn't know anything about it um, just when things turned bad it was when Elvis found out certain things some really strange things so I think if you don't know anything about him or even if you do I think this is an entertaining movie the movie is a bit long but you don't see the time goes by you don't see the time fly go by, go by right <laughs> I'm sorry um, you don't see the time go by so it's really really entertaining so go watch it then that was the only movie that I saw then about series I rewatched Kamisama Hajime Mashita so I saw the anime so it's like a series right it's not a series but you know it's kinda it's an anime and um, you know I told you the story already so I I'm not going to repeat myself I just I'm just going to say that I don't know exactly how many episodes it has but and I don't remember till so the anime is not completed um, it goes to I don't even think the middle of the manga I don't think it reach it reaches the middle of the manga it has se uh, season 1 and season 2 of this anime and then it has four of us I think that's how you say it if it's not please let me know in the comments uh, so it's not likely that this manga will have a continuity because they did the ovas and so they would shown parts of the story that was missing in the series 
and they show like the ending of the manga so it's not likely that they pick this anime again to make more seasons that's a shame because I really love this this manga and this anime I think you will love this one so read the manga and go watch the anime then I started watching Fleabag so this is a um, comedy um, series um, and I still I saw the first season and I'm watching the second one the second one um, I think I have only two episodes to go uh, I should well I was supposed to uh, end this um, series bef um, sooner but uh, I stopped watching and then I didn't return to it so I didn't saw the two last episodes but I was really liking it so this is a series about a woman that she's like 30 years old or something and it's about her life she has a sister and she has a um, coffee shop and we more later find out that she has um, this coffee shop with a friend but this friend died she's really missing her and you know she's grieving in a way uh, and yeah it's about her life and how um, she she doesn't have her life figure out figured out and her sister is more um, stable in her job and she has a well-paid job I think she's a lawyer um, and her sister tries to help her out but she doesn't want her help so and something special about this series is the way that it's filmed so the main character speaks to the camera and looks at, at the camera so that's uh, uh, something fresh that you don't see in every series that you watch so that's kind of fun and different and she makes really sarcastic and ironic remarks and it's you know it's it's not that maybe it's not that laughing out loud series but um, I think well isn't it there is some parts that you want to laugh really hard um, but it's really it's really funny it talks about you know it's kind of a conjunction with the serious top serious topics and real life stuff and humorous um, relief so it's this union and with our main character talking to us and she meets a, f a priest in the between and it's really funny so please go watch it then I saw the offer this is a series about the making of the movie The Godfather I love this series I, I think it was so interesting I never suspected that the making of The Godfather was so problematic I didn't know anything about it I just know that I saw the movie and I loved it but beyond that I didn't know anything and it was astonishing how this movie was so problematic so we accompany the producer of the movie the when he was uh, working uh, outside of Hollywood in a regular job and how he entered the world of Hollywood um, and how he then goes to Paramount and gets a job as a producer and there he is given the offer of The Godfather so The Godfather is based on a book 
that um, was really success successful and Paramount bought the rights to the book uh, and then this movie is so given to this producer, young producer, right? Uh, and then it tells the story of how the casting was, how he found the director, how they, how it was the um, process of writing the script. So every detail about the making of this movie is talked about in this series and how this producer had to make a relationship with the Italo-American mafia of New York. So, well, so many things happened and so many obstacles were put in their way that it was a miracle that this movie was made at all. So, <laughs> I think if you love Godfather of, or even if you have interest surrounding Hollywood and how movies are make are made I think you will love this series so if you didn't know about it or if you were on doubt or if it was on the back of your mind and you didn't watch it go do so and then I'm watching still Wu Young Woo so this is a, Kore a South Korean series uh, this is about a lawyer who has who is in the spectrum of autism, autism, right? Um, and how she uh, finished her um, course, and she goes find. Well, the series begins when she's uh, going to Hambada. I think that's how called right I think it is so this is a, a lawyery company lawyery a lawyers company and she gets a job there and then the leader of the team where she's going to work with um, goes to the CEO of the company and asks why they employ this person in particular because she has autism um, and how she is going to be a good lawyer if she has autism and the CEO says that he has to give a chance to her and then we accompany her in different cases so each episode is for a particular case uh, and it's really fun it's really amusing, really entertaining. Uh, we see her with all her peculiar peculiarities and uh, habits and mannerisms, um, everything surrounding autism, but more. Yeah, and it's really fun. I love the actress that does Wu Yang Wu. That's our main character. Um, I love, well, not just her, I love everyone. I think they are great. It's so funny to see, like she, I'm going to give you something. Like, she counts before she gets in uh, a room. And it's so funny to see her do that every time. And when she is enthusiastic about something, she, she counts and she goes, but she is fast about it. It's a little detail. It's but it's so funny um, and the way that oh she has a fashion a, fa aye, a fascination with whales and she loves talking about whales and everything to do with whales and something that happens is when she has um, a brilliant idea coming to her head to solve the case um, there she's in the camera like focus on focuses on her and it like approaches her and goes like that and it, it's like she has a fan waving to her hair like whew, something like that and then we see 
an image of a whale going to surface and dive again it's so funny it's really oh and then another thing so in the, the building of the company it has a revolving door and she has trouble passing through the through it because when she arrives the first the the first day that she goes there she can't go to the normal doors because they are cleaning the floor so she she has to go through the revolving door and she's like she doesn't have the rhythm to go in and go out of the the revolving door it's really it's small details but it's so funny um and i don't know anything about south korean law so also we see how they interact in the courts uh, I didn't know I don't know how much realistic it is in the series like what happens in real life in South Korea but uh, I think that the lawyers have a much more liberty to talk with them uh, between them in the court if that's real really interesting as well i think that i told you enough it's a brilliant series i'm really having fun watching it um really interesting cases as well what they bring and everything surrounding it uh, it's really fun and really entertaining yeah true inter entertainment so i think you will love it too so yeah i think let me see yeah, I think that's it. Um, well, please subscribe to my channel if you haven't subscribed already. Leave a like, it helps a lot the divulgation of the video and the divulgation of the channel. Follow me on Instagram, I'll be posting there whenever I have a book review to do or anything else. And that's it, I hope you have enjoyed it, enjoyed it and I'll see you on the next one. Bye!